Hello everyone, my name is Joe Neat. Uh, I'm the executive producer on Sea of Thieves. And we wanted to start a new series of videos, really, where we were just talking about uh, the kind of top status of what's going on on Sea of Thieves at, at Rare, uh, within the team, like our, our top fo uh, focus, um, the how we structure the team, and kind of some of the top talking points and bits of feedback, and really just how we're going to be um, delivering Sea of Thieves and, and informing um, everyone uh, at home how that how that's going, really. So um, I've got my laptop here to the side that I'm going to keep referring to. Hopefully I've muted it and it's not going to keep pinging meeting reminders. So first up, uh, to, like, I wanted to talk a little bit about today's release. Um, so we're into this rhythm of weekly updates to the game uh, and today's release is focused around uh, adding more customization options to players. So you know, previously we've been focused a lot around, um, around bug fixing or, or hitting some of the top launch issues that we've had in a lot of our um, updates and now um, we're looking at getting into that rhythm of adding new little features, adding new content as, as we move forward um, and really growing on the kind of um, the base of Sea of Thieves that we, that we launch with. And so we're we're adding new customization options across um, player uh, customization options, across ship customization, across weapons, uh, and we're also giving this custom kind of launch crew eye of reach. Uh, it's going to be available in the shops for um, for anyone that's playing at this time. It's a time limited thing. It'll just be for one gold. Um, so you know, if you're playing around this time and you've been with us uh, kind of since the start, get in there, get this kind of cool thing. It's only going to be available for a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, that's just our way of saying thank you to everyone that's um, that's been um, you know playing along with us and and coming on the Sea of Thieves journey. Aside from uh, the customization options that we've added to the game, uh, we've also there's been a few like well, there's a number of fixes, but some of the high highlights for me are we've stopped you being invulnerable during the like the mini tutorial when you first start the game, um, which we had seen some um, instances of people abusing, which is where they were basically just waiting in the tutorial state, hanging around an outpost and being invulnerable so that anybody would join. Uh, and it kind of looked like they were almost hacking or cheating within the game, whereas actually they were just not going out of the tutorial state. So we've um, we've solved that. Um, we've also nerfed the skeleton accuracy on cannons um, because we've heard from you know um, skeletons at a distance were slightly overpowered. Um, there's been some great memes on Reddit about that, and so um, uh, we should uh, have addressed that for players. But obviously, love to hear people's feedback. Another little thing, a little quality of life improvement, um, is the bell on the small ship has now been moved to a slightly different location, so when you're going and interacting with the ladder, you're not going to be accidentally ringing the bell all the time. That's in this week's uh, update. Aside from that, I wanted to give a little bit of information just around the, the kind of current team's focus. So since we launched, obviously we were tackling a lot of the top uh, launch issues for the game, um, uh, taking on some of the top feedback points, um, but really we're into this rhythm now of really kind of forward-looking and, and working on uh, content that's coming for the hunger and deep, um, but also the content updates beyond that. We've actually changed the structure of how the team um, uh, is formed really to enable us to deliver as much kind of cool new content to players as possible. So the team's now split into three um, separate teams. So there's one team working on the Hungering Deep update. Uh, there's another team working on Cursed Sails uh, update and another team working on the Forsaken Shores update. And so th the way the teams are structured is they have their kind of major features that they're looking to deliver for, um, for that update. Uh, they're also working on um, the weekly uh, events um, within that kind of time frame and period. And they're also taking kind of top feedback points being fed into them. So <clears throat> as we look towards our May update, which is um, the Hungering Deep, you know, that, that team's working on those major features. It's looking at kind of the, um, the weekly events beyond that too. Um, but, you know, I, I would consider that to be like a medium-sized content update because it's something that um, the team's been working on since like uh, soon after launch, uh, looking to deliver it in May. But then if we look beyond that to um, Curse Sales and we look beyond that to Forsaken Shores, obviously those, uh, the teams that are working on those content updates have a bit of a longer lead time in terms of um, before, that, before those uh, features and content is delivered. And so those are going to be large content updates and that's the rhythm we want to get into so as the hungering deep team finishes their work up in may they're going to be moving beyond um, beyond curse sales beyond forsaken shores th and they're going to be starting work on the next content update that comes beyond that um, so they're going to have a much longer lead time again to deliver more features and more content um, but that's the rhythm we're getting into so each team kind of has their goal they deliver that um, content to players and then they move almost to the back of the queue uh, and then they're starting work on the next big kind of chunk of stuff lots of cool stuff going on at the moment with the hungering deep itself 
um, some really cool kind of videos and images being shared within our um, team updates of the work in progress stuff. Lots of iteration um, on the stuff that's going there, really trying to deliver a cool player experience. Every day we're looking at that, we're tuning it, we're iterating it, like to, to get it into the shape so we can then ship it to players. But our intent is to deliver that in May, um, and then we will start um, our weekly events after the Hungering Deep. And so, so you think about that, we deliver the Hungering Deep update, um, uh, hopefully everyone has a great time, um, and then um, we'll, we'll get into that rhythm of weekly events, leading us through to the next content update, um, and deliver that, and then through to, to weekly events. So that's really gonna be our, our rhythm from, from here on in. Alongside the content updates, alongside the um, weekly events, we'll generally be always delivering quality of life improvements um, to the game. So a few of the things um, that are in progress at the moment, some of them based on uh, feedback and some of them just based on um, improving the experience. So yeah, public and private crews is something we've talked about for a little while as one of the top feedback points, enabling people to choose um, whether they uh, allow strangers into the crew or they just want friends. Um, so that's something we're testing right now and we're hoping to get that into next week's patch. Um, so. Uh, alongside that, a few other things. So one of the one of the things that our kind of engine team's been working on is reducing patch sizes for people. Um, so we're hoping to enable that in the in the next patch, so it should be smaller than the ones that have been kind of preceding it. Uh, we're also working on a couple of other uh, small things that would just generally improve the experience. So one is allowing you to hand kind of resources to each other, so you'll be able to give a banana to, to somebody else or a piece of word, etc. Um, and also something that I think has been requested by quite a lot of people um, from a kind of sneakiness perspective. Um, is being like that we want to hide nameplates when you're underwater. So if you're swimming towards kind of another ship, uh, you won't be able to see their game attack um, through, through the water itself, enabling a bit more of that kind of stealthy gameplay when you're swimming up maybe with an explosive barrel and stuff. Yeah, so we're hoping to do video updates like this pretty regularly, just informing everybody of what's going on across the team. Um, and as always, really keen to hear feedback around what could we go into more detail on, uh, what areas have we not covered that you'd want us to cover, what stuff did we cover that you thought was really boring. Um, but generally, just like let, let us know um, how we're doing in terms of sharing information and updates with you. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. You know, we, we've launched just over a month ago. Um, the entire team uh, is working on Sea of Thieves and working on future content um, and really looking forward to, um, to delivering some of the stuff that we've, uh, that we've got lined up for you. So yeah, exciting times and I'll uh, see you out on the seas. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with everything Sea of Thieves, then subscribe to our channel and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers. Don't worry, I'll, I'll just wait here. I'm not doing, not doing much anyway. A couple, couple of good videos there if you want to watch.